Hi, welcome back. In today's class, we'll be focusing on the hands, the wrists, the arms, and how it relates to the shoulder as well. There'll be a little bit of work with the abdominals. So whenever we're going to use our hands and our wrists and our arms to bear our weight, it requires certain understanding. So we'll go through that today. All right, it should be a fun um, and challenging class. So get ready and have one block or actually have a couple blocks and a strap. Okay, let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. All right, so <clears throat> sitting on a block, just so that you have a little bit of extra height and sitting in a cross leg position, we're just going to take our hands in front of us and start to bring some mil mobility to the hand. So you can just take one hand and press that hand back. So you're broadening through the hand and you're pressing it. Keep the arms straight so you're bending at the wrist. And you can take your hand on your fingers and move your fingers back. And then just hold that and <clears throat> breathe into it. And then you're going to do the other side. So again, straighten the arm. So from here, from the shoulder to the elbow to the hand, flex the, the fingers back. So you're lengthening through the front of the wrist. There's no. Um, it's not weight bearing at this point, so you can just do that a couple times, get some mobility there, and now do the opposite side. Bringing the hand down, bending at the wrist, extending the fingers down. This is really good for all of us, no matter if we're going to do weight bearing asana practice or not, because we're on the computer so much, or you're in certain positions with the hand, which is usually like this. So here we're opening. So doing that a few times. Just pressing, lengthening those muscles, the ligaments and the tendons, the ligaments and the tendons. And then just do the other side. So it's just a little bit of a warm up to get your wrists starting to move. The hand broadening, feeling the fingers, pressing the fingers against something to open through the palm and keep the arms straight. Okay, so doing that a few times, using the fingers on the front of the hand to move the hand down. You can feel the muscles there, let them release. Okay, and now <coughs> you're going to take the hands, interlace the fingers and press the hands out. Urdhva Bada Gulayanasana. So here the fingers are pressing against the hand. You're broadening the hand and I'm going to bend the hand in such a way that the wrist is at a 90 degree angle. So the thumbs coming towards one another, keep the arms straight and press out through the heel of the hand. So it's, uh, if you're very flexible, you may end up looking like this from the other side. So it's not 90 degree. Press out into the wrist, bring your outer arms towards one another. And the more you do that, the more it'll come to a 90 degree angle. And then lift the arms up. So Extend up through the wrist, extend up through the palm, extend the fingers up to the hand and reach up. And then exhale, bring your hands down, change the cross on the fingers, press out again from the fingers into the hands, broaden the palm, connect the thumbs, and then roll the little finger side down toward the floor. So if you look up, you might see your fingers, your little fingers like that. So. Bring the little finger side down, which will help you get more of that <coughs> extension in the wrist. So just feel the, the heel of the hand lifting up. Stay with your breath. And then release down. Okay, now come off your platform and you're just going to bring your hands onto the floor. So first, just spread your fingers and have the whole heel of the hand widening and the fingers spreading and press all the mounds down. 
and then come forward so you start to have that weight there. When you press down into the hand, you're also lifting up through the, through the wrist. So pressing down, but lifting up. Arms are straight. And then lean forward. So as you lean forward, you feel more extension in the hand, more openness coming. Just be with that. Observe what you feel. Okay. We come to this side now. We'll do that one more time. So coming up, leaning forward. So I'm coming onto my knees more and I'm coming forward just to feel that pressure of the wrist of the little finger side of the hand, all the fingers moving down, but at the same time lifting the wrist up. All right, and now we're gonna go into downward dog. So move your knees back, finding some distance there. It's an approximate. Come onto your hands and you'll lift your hips up. Bending all the toes, press into the hands, lengthen the fingers, and then lift up from the wrist, up into the elbow, up into the upper arm, up into the shoulders, and move the chest back toward the thighs. And now you're gonna come forward and come into a plank position. So now you can feel the weight on your hands. Move your hips down. So the hips are in line with your, more or less with your shoulders, but you can feel more weight on your hands. So feel that weight. Keep the thighs lifting up. Press from the shoulders down. Press into the index finger and the thumb mound and lift up through the inner arm. And then come onto your knees. Now turn your hands out. Take your hands a little bit wider, so they're a little bit, your sh and the inner wrist is in line with your inner shoulder. And then again, pressing the hands, lift up through the inner arm, lengthen up. You can stay on your toes, Just getting a, a lift with the hips, a lift with the legs. And then coming into that plank position with the hands turned this way. So you're rotating the arms, shoulders, inner arm is rolling out, thighs resist going to the floor, tailbone into the body, just look forward. And then come down. And now you're gonna take your fingers in towards one another. To feel that you can go down on that. You may feel some sensations in the different hand turning. So just spread the hands, lengthen the fingers, and press evenly. And then come back to that downward dog. Observe where you feel those sensations. Keep pressing down, straightening the arms. That one's a little bit more difficult. So now come forward into that plank pose. And then bring your knees onto the floor. And let's just take our hands and revolve the wrists, okay? So here, this is a good thing to do when you've been sitting at the computer or you've been driving and you need a little break for your wrists. So just keep your hands wide or bring your fingers in together and just start to rotate, rotate each hand at the wrist. So doing the same movement that we did earlier, in, out, up, down, and rotating around, and then counterclockwise. Okay, they feel better now, don't they? Okay, now we're gonna go back down and come into Adhimukha Svanasana one more time. Lengthen the legs back. And now here, you're gonna come back to that plank pose. You're gonna turn your foot. So I'm turning this foot onto the side. 
bring the foot onto the floor. Here, so I'm bracing myself so that I can bring the full weight onto this hand, but at the same time lift up, connect with the shoulder, connect with the arm, and lift the hip up. So as I press into that outer edge of the back foot, I press into the hand, lift up through the inner arm, and if you are able to take the foot down, take the foot down, just have the toes on the floor to brace yourself, and then bring the foot on top of the other foot. So either keep the toes on the floor or the knee bent, and then come up. And come back to downward dog. Bring weight onto both hands, lengthen through both arms. Come back into that plank pose. Now you come onto the other foot. Take the foot, stabilize yourself so that you can feel that you're on the outer edge of the foot. So make sure you're on the outer edge of that foot. And you can take your toes down, get that stabilization, get ready to balance. Bring your foot onto the outer foot. Bring this back shoulder blade into the body. Press the hand down, lift up. Keep the hips lifting. Turn the chest. And look up. So you're in Tadasana. Buttock forward, thighs back. Press the hand down, lift up through the arm. And then come back to Adho And then walk forward. Coming into Pada Hastasana. Lift the foot and stretch the toes all the way down to the heel. Have the big toe right on the wrist. If you were wearing a wristwatch, where that band would be. And then shift your weight. So even out the hands. This one's a little further forward. So just make sure your feet are even. Lift up. Press the toes. Press the mounds of the toes. And just let that front wrist Press down into the floor as you lift the upper arms. Thighs are back, lengthen forward. And then release. Okay? Right. So before when we needed to release the wrists, we did this. Here we've done Padahastasana. Okay, another <coughs> action that you can use in asana is to come to namaskar. So namaskar, both hands together, both hands pressing against one another, the heel of the hand and the whole surface of the hand. And from here you're pressing from the elbow into the wrist, so you're pressing evenly. Okay, so we're going to take the hands behind our back in Pashina Namaskar. So you can take one hand back, you can walk the hand up, turn it, and then take the other hand, find its other finger that's its mate, press all the fingers against one another. So you're spreading the hand, and then with that, roll the shoulders back, collarbones wide, and then from the shoulder to the elbow, move down. From the side waist, lift up through the armpit chest. And then press the fingers against one another. Press the heel of the hand. So now it's not bearing weight, this stretch, this extension. But you can feel that opening coming through your wrist. It's a whole different sensation. So just be there and bring the elbows back. Stay with your breath. Any pain or discomfort you feel is... Um, will go away as soon as you stop doing this, okay? So we discriminate between good pain and bad pain. So sometimes we feel uncomfortable and we move away from that. But some pain is meant to be happening so that you can go a little bit deeper and open up and
get past that. So here, with Pashina Namaskar, same thing. Just stretch your fingers down, let your wrists rest, come into a neutral. And then one more time, take the hands up. Conversely, if you can't do that, then just hold on to your elbows. So it's not the same, but you're still getting that width across your shoulders and the connection from your shoulder to your elbow to your hand. So taking one more time, you can even take your hand on your forearm, walk your hand up a little bit higher, inch your fingers up. Sometimes the shirt has a lot of folds in the back, so it requires you to kind of shimmy the hands up. The little finger is right at the spinal column. And from there, draw that center of your body in, away from the fingers. Collarbones wide, shoulders moving back. Now find that connection from the elbow into the hand. And breathe into that. See if you can get the heel of the hand touching, all the fingers touching. And if not today, something that you can practice, which is going to be really good for your wrists and your fingers and your hands over the long run. Okay, releasing that. We're going to go back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. This time we're going to take a little bit closer stride and we're going to bring the heels to the wall. So from here, we are in a inversion, and I'm going to walk the feet up the wall. So now I have the weight on my hands, and I'm lifting up with the heels to create a little bit more lightness. So if I just come into this position, I can feel a lot of weight. So I'm lifting the heels up on the toes, move the chest toward the wall, And then coming back down, I'll come into Adho Mukha Svanasana and I'll just bring one leg up. So turn the toes under, stretch the heel up, and as you lengthen that heel up, lift the forearms up, away from the hands, press the hands down. So you're turning the hip toward the, the hip bone is moving toward the floor. So here, taking the other leg up now, you're using the leg to help create a little bit more lightness on the hands, on the arms, and into the shoulders. Press the heel up, move the standing leg thigh back, and move the chest back toward the wall. And then come down. And you're going to come into Gomokasana now. So in Gomokasana here, we're going to use two blocks to begin with, and we'll use two heights. So first, this higher height. And so the pose is low lasana, and it means swinging back and forth. Okay, so we're going to use our hands to lift ourselves up. So you're going to come into Gomokasana, bring one knee behind, or the shin bone behind the other, and then sit back. So when you do that, one knee will be more lifted than the other. All right, so this is a balancing pose, but it's also a strengthening pose. And you'll be using the abdominal as well. So to come into this, we're gonna be coming into a more rounded position to begin with, which will then contract the abdomen a little bit more. So you press your hands into the block, press the whole hand down, the wrist, all the fingers. Have the blocks back far enough that you can still press the hands into the block and lean forward. So you'll come forward like that, and then press the hands and lift the legs up. You're gonna do the other side. So sit up tall. You could feel that contraction through the abdomen. So it's not gripping or squeezing, but there's a definite 
movement inward for the abdomen. So you're coming forward. Arms, shoulders are, are rounding slightly. Chest is moving in. And with that, press the hands and lift the legs. Now you're going to do with a lower block. So some of you may not even need a block, but I'm showing it on this block and here, and then we can do it on the floor. So the idea is you're using the hand. The block is giving you a little bit of lift so that when you go to lift your body up, you can, you can come off the floor. So prior to this practice, um, you can also do s the classes that I've done with more abdominal work, which will help to activate and stimulate because you are doing some abdominal work here, okay? So coming forward again. I have the blocks on the lower height. I'm going to use the hands, press down, press from the shoulder, press from the whole shoulder girdle from the back, and moving in and up. Press, breathe, and hold. So you'll find you'll be using a lot of energy, a lot of work, so you have to remember this so you can practice. So if you're having your uh, cycle or you're having any kind of abdominal pains right now, you wouldn't want to do this. Nothing to aggravate the abdomen. Okay, coming forward. Lift up. and come down. Okay, so we'll just do those two blocks. You can also just bring the hands onto the floor. We'll leave that for another day. Okay, now we're going to go into Ekahasta Bhujangasana. You can use a block for, we'll use blocks for these as well. Okay, so you'll come into Dandasana, and I'll turn this way. So. Sitting in Dandasana with the legs straight, have the blocks near you. This is also a bit of a hip opener, so if you want to prepare yourself or do some more after this class, you could work on the hip opening class. So you're going to bring the, the foot back, and then you'll lift the leg up. Okay, we want to just maybe a few times bring the foot back, get a little bit more warmth in that hip, because we've really been working on the wrists. So now you're going to bring the hand and arm underneath that leg, and you're going to pull it down. OK. I'm going to use the block on both sides. It's a little high, so I'm going to take the block down. And you want to keep the arm on the top of that, or the leg on top of the arm. So you're pointing the foot down. So think about a nutcracker. So when you put the, the nut in there and you press down on it. So this is holding the arm in place. As you press your fingers down, you're going to also lean forward, like we did in Lolasana. Lean forward, press the hands down, and lift the leg and look forward. So you're pressing into the hands, the fingers, from the shoulders, and then coming down. OK, that wasn't very graceful when I came down, so hopefully you're not going to fall. All right, bring your leg back. Let's get a little bit of that hip opening. You can also sit on a block, which I'll show you, in case that was not accessible for you at all. You can sit on the block, bring the leg back, and then take the arm underneath. So you're getting the calf on the shoulder as high up as you can. And then press that foot down. So you're clamping it down, and you're bringing the blocks back a little bit, and then you're moving forward. As you move forward, it keeps that leg on the upper shoulder. And take your other hand on the block, and lift up. Stay with your breath. Now, if you weren't sitting on the block, 
You could, and you couldn't get your leg off the floor. You can also start with the block in this position to lift your heel. So coming to the first side, this time I'm going to take the block away. Just bring the whole hand on the floor and I press the arm back, which then keeps the leg from sliding off. So get as low as you can on that. Press the foot down. Bring the hands onto the floor. And then lean forward. So this is if you couldn't lift the leg. If you, could, if you can lift the leg and you don't need that block, you can go to this position with both hands on the floor. Lean forward. So you can, you're going to feel a lot more pressure on your wrists here. and lift. Other side. So using those blocks or coming to the floor and not using the blocks to be your choice depending on the access that you had. So leaning forward, shifting the weight forward, lift the heel, lift the leg. And then come down. Okay, that was Ekahasta Bhujangasana. So from here, you're going to stand up and we'll come into arm balance, um, handstand. So you're bringing your hands to the wall, walk back. We're going to be standing on our hands now, so completely weight bearing. So spread your fingers, have the hands shoulder width apart. Bend one knee, and then swing the leg up. Once you're there, bring your feet together. Press up through the mountains of the feet. Press into the heel of the hand. So feel the whole hand on the floor from the wrists lift up into the elbows. From the shoulders outer shoulders press down into the hand and from the inner wrist lift up to the inner arm. Release your head. To come down, keep one leg lifted up and bring the other leg down. Come into Adho Svanasana. And then come into forward virasana. Take a few breaths there. Inhale, come up. And then you're going to sit. Getting ready for Shavasana. Okay, coming down to Shavasana. You're gonna have two blocks. And you're going to bring the block right onto your wrist. So just relax the wrist. If you have someone there that can do it for you or if you can manage, bring the rock block onto the wrist at the hand and at the forearm and then just extend your legs down. Adjust your shoulders, extend your legs, let the legs roll out. From the inner arms roll the shoulders out. Just let the hands and the wrists Relax. Allow the fingers to curl.
and then stay there as long as you'd like. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the class. It was um, a little challenging. I'm sure it got your, got your body feeling different parts, the hands, the abdomen, and the heart was pumping. So thanks, and if you would like to have some other classes that will help you open the hips before you start or start to activate the abdominals, because this was a fairly short class. It was 30 minutes, but still there's some more opening that you could do. So look at those and join me next time. We'll see you soon. Namaste.